Hyundai just unveiled the brand new 2021 Elantra, and it's got a whole lot of really interesting tech. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that while the domestic manufacturers seem to have abandoned cars, I think it's really interesting, and I think it's actually a very smart move that Hyundai is actually embracing the automobile as opposed to the big SUV and CUV trend that we've seen from the domestics. With these really uncertain times in the economy, it's probably a pretty smart bet. Now, the Elantra has been a very popular vehicle for Hyundai. They've actually sold 3.4 million of them, and it's sort of their mid-level offering. It slots in above the Accent and below the Sonata. And this new one is based on a completely brand new architecture. It's the third generation architecture. They've been making these since about 1990. And they've got an N version confirmed, which is for the enthusiasts. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video. Now it's got really bold new styling compared to the last generation. Hyundai calls it emotionally expressive. So we're gonna look at the styling. We're gonna look at the interior. We're gonna look at the technology, which is I think the big news in this vehicle. And we're gonna look at the powertrains. They've got some new ones. And then we're gonna look at how this slots in and compares to the other competition in the marketplace. My name is Eric and and if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Also, I've got a Patreon. I'm gonna reopen at the end of the month if you'd like to help support the channel as well. So Hyundai has bragged about how this car has gotten a little bit bigger than the last generation. It is longer, it's wider, and it's got a lower roof line. And they've compared it against the competitors, showing that it is a little bit bigger than all of the competitors. Now, the vehicles that it is going up against in the marketplace are, of course, the Toyota Corolla and the Honda Civic. I think those are the main competition, along with the Mazda 3. But you've also got the Jetta and, of course, the uh, Nissan Sentra. So the current design language that Hyundai has been implementing since about 2018 is called serious sportiness, which is a kind of a common thread. And what I'm seeing here is a lot of really interesting triangles. I'm gonna let the senior designer uh, for Hyundai Design North America, Davis Lee, uh, talk about it for just a second, and then we'll come back. We use parametric shapes and textures to give it an edgy, aggressive look, and we cascaded those shapes throughout the entire car. You first notice them on the front end in the parametric jewel pattern grille. Also, we created an integrated architecture with the LED headlamps and harmonized the shapes of the air curtain and lower fascia to create a strong graphic. I'm seeing a lot of triangles here, and I think one of the most notable things about it is this really strong, these character lines going across the doors and into the front fender. You've definitely got a series of triangles there and also leading back into the, the rear taillight section too. I think it's quite sharp. It's very crisp looking and I kind of dig it actually. Now it does have a very large grill, but I think it's pretty well done. It flows into the headlights really pretty nicely. The headlights and the specifically the uh, daytime running lights, I think look you know, pretty nice, pretty sharp. It's not overly aggressive, but I still think it's pretty striking. And one thing that I do like is the, the tail treatment. Uh, it's got this sort of wedge shaped design in the back. And overall, I think for the segment, it's a very good looking vehicle. I think it's probably, I don't know if I call it the most aggressive looking vehicle, but it's certainly got some, I think some pretty, some pretty crisp styling. So this is definitely a pretty big, this is definitely a pretty big departure from the current generation Elantra. I think this looks a lot better on the exterior. Let's talk about the technology next. So the 2021 Elantra is packed with all kinds of goodies, all kinds of technology that I think helps set it a little bit apart from the competition. It has wireless Apple CarPlay, which is pretty great. It also has wireless Android Auto. And the dashboard is an LCD, or rather an LED display, and it has an optional 10 and a quarter inch display on the top of the center stack. And if you get that, you get one piece of glass that goes from the dashboard all the way across to the center display, which is pretty neat. It has this real sort of wrap around kind of feel to it, and it looks pretty nice for a car in this segment. It also has an available Bose sound system. However, if you get the base display, you've got these knobs on it and it definitely doesn't look nearly as good as the optional one. I think that's kind of intentional to entice you to upgrade to the, the next level up package. Now you can use your key fob or you can use something called 
Hyundai Digital Key, and it works with your smartphone, actually. So you're able to enter the car, and you're able to do remote start in the car all from your phone. Tesla has this capability as well, but bringing it down into the level of vehicle like the Hyundai, I think, is pretty exciting. None of the competitors have this technology yet. It does raise a little bit of a potential security concern, but that remains to be seen how that's gonna play out. So it also has a pretty neat voice recognition system that not only allows you to give navigation inputs, but you can actually adjust the climate control. So you can tell the car to send the vents, the air to the front vents, to send them to the dashboard, to turn on the heated seats, all that kind of stuff. It's actually, it's pretty neat. It's also got a whole host of safety features standard. Hyundai calls it Smart Sense, and the standard features are pretty good. It's got forward collision assist, lane keep assist, lane following assist, where it follows the vehicle, keeps the vehicle in the center of the lane and follows the one ahead of you. It's got high beam assist and also a driver attention warning. These are all standard features in it. And it's also got some optional features too, some safety features such as blind spot collision avoidance assist. All these acronyms are kind of like ridiculous in cars now, right? Rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist. I don't even know how many letters that is, and smart cruise control. So it's got a lot of features which are pretty good and pretty competitive in this space. For example, the Toyota Corolla, this sort of seems to match all the base features in the Corolla, which has a very, very similar set of safety features. So they're definitely going head to head with the Corolla at probably a slightly lower price. Next, let's talk about the interior. So this definitely is bigger than the previous generation. And again, Hyundai has said it's longer and wider and lower. I'm not sure if it has more or less space in the competition. Uh, Hyundai is certainly positioning it that way, at least from the ex exterior dimensions. Now, Hyundai says that the rear seat legroom beats the 5 Series. I'm assuming that they are referring to the BMW 5 Series. I don't know if that means the distance between your knees and the back seat. So I don't know exactly what that means, but that's what they're saying. The seats appear to be cloth. I don't see any leather option. I could be wrong in that, but they look like cloth. And it's also got multiple USB ports for charging and it does have wireless charging as well. Next let's talk about the powertrains. It has two different powertrains. It has a normally aspirated 2 liter making 147 horsepower and 132 pounds-feet of torque. Now compared to the competition that is definitely on the lower end of the scale. Uh, it's definitely not going to be a fast vehicle any way you put it. They do say it's going to have best-in-class MPG for normally aspirated engine, so not exactly sure what that means, but I guess they're comparing it against the Corolla and the Mazda 3 and so forth. So we'll see what that actually ends up being. Just for reference, the 2020 Corolla has uh, 37 miles per gallon combined, and the 2020 Civic has 36 combined. Now, in real-world testing, uh, with car and driver and motor trend and so forth, they seem to get pretty close to these numbers and they're actually beating it on the highway. So we'll see how this comes in, but I think it's gonna slot in pretty similarly. But this is not gonna be a powerful car. And of course, this uh, normally aspirated engine comes with a CVT. Now here's where it gets really interesting. It also comes with a hybrid powertrain. It's got a 1.6 liter engine with obviously an electric motor, and it makes a total combined 139 horsepower 195 pounds-feet of torque, that's a lot of torque. But here's the cool thing, it's sort of backwards. It comes with a six-speed dual clutch. Now, a dual clutch is obviously sort of my go-to, and I think more enthusiasts are gonna appreciate a dual clutch compared to a CVT transmission. And it's interesting that that goes with the hybrid. So they say it makes for a better driving experience. I'm a little confused why they put the the dual clutch in the hybrid. I think it's gonna be sort of less sporty drivers that are interested in this, but perhaps they're gonna position it so they can charge a little bit more money, a little bit of a premium for that. Don't know exactly how that's gonna be positioned at the end of the day. They're claiming that it's gonna get more than 50 miles per gallon, which is a little bit behind the Corolla hybrid, which gets about 52 combined. Um, and there is no Civic Hybrid, by the way. Now here's what I'm excited about. An N version is coming as well. They were a little bit cagey on the details, but the i30N, which we don't get in North America, it has a 275 horsepower, uh, I think a two liter turbo, 
And according to Korean car blog, it may get this engine, but it could also get a 201 1.6 liter engine with a six speed manual. We're gonna have to wait and see for that, but Hyundai is definitely moving pretty aggressively into the enthusiast space. They've got a mid-engine Veloster, which was at the LA Auto Show, still a prototype vehicle. But Hyundai is definitely stepping up to the plate in the performance category. That, that speaks to me. We're talking about delivery starting in Q4, and it's gonna be built in Alabama for the North American market. So that's kind of nice to see that they are building this in North America. Now the current price, I'm not sure where this is gonna come in, probably a little bit higher than the current one, but the current SE starts at about $18,000 and goes up to about 27,800 roughly for the sport version with options. I think you can expect this to slot in a little bit higher than that. I'm not quite sure how much, I would guess about $1,000 to $1,500 uh, at the base end and maybe going a little bit higher up than that. And we don't know what the end version is gonna be, but I'm assuming you know, probably closer to the high 20s base. I wanted to give a quick shout out to one of my followers and fans on Instagram. It's Trilokesh. Thank you for following me for so long. He just had his birthday, so happy birthday to you. There's two videos up on screen right now. If you like this content, please click on one of them and consider subscribing. My name is Eric, and I will see you in the next video.